everyone and welcome back to this week's episode um, of the inviting people to interview me. <laughs> and today we have Ira, also for, from Sweden. And uh, yeah, Ira is super cool. I think we're approximately almost the same age. Yeah. I'm not sure. Approximately, yeah. And uh, she's really cool with tech stuff and anime and... Yeah, so uh, I'll just give the word to her. Hey! <laughs> Hi, yeah, so as uh, Lisa said, I'm Aira. Uh, I work a lot behind the scenes uh, with her and uh, as well as Annette, who was here uh, last week, I think. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that is sort of who I am. I have not really been part a lot of this world that uh, uh, Lisa has been a part of. Uh, all of this has been very new to me as I've started to work with Elisa. So I'm coming sort of from a perspective of someone who has not been as familiar with these things, even though um, I've always liked a lot of things like uh, nature and such, even though I might not have the same type of connection. Um, I know that Elisa talks a lot about authenticity and stuff like that. Uh, so I would like to ask her, uh, sort of, how do you become more authentic with yourself? How do you allow yourself to feel things without becoming completely overwhelmed by all of the emotions? I think it's um, <laughs> it's a matter of actually being okay with becoming overwhelmed with the emotions. So if we, for a longer period, have hold ourselves in a box... And, uh, and, and we're afraid of opening the box because we're afraid of the overwhelmness of all the things we're going to feel. It's surrendering to that in the beginning, you need to take the street stream off. So in the beginning, it will just feel overwhelming. It will just feel like chaos because you're not used to allowing it. But then it will find its um, balance point and it will no longer be overwhelmed. You will learn how to float with it. So I think the very thing that for me, work was um, <laughs> once upon a time, I, <laughs> I went to the mental hospital and they gave me like seven diagnoses and said I was cuckoo and I was never going to be normal. And I had this uh, moment where I thought to myself, okay, I'm just going to accept I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm just going to accept that I'm not functioning like everybody else and I rather want to fully accept that I'm crazy and then be happy to see the sunrise than I want to hide in a box and let go of my life, you know? And within that uh, moment, it created such a freedom within myself. And truth be told, I didn't change that much <laughs> from, from before to laughter, but my perception of myself and the freedom that I felt in my heart, that changed. Um, and then it's to notice the the moments where you normally withdraw yourself and try to learn to allow yourself to express yourself in those situations. That is a very good answer. Thank you. Uh, You're <laughs> uh, I would guess that sort of in the same way. How do you sort of handle emotions when the emotions aren't only related to yourself? Sometimes it can be related to your environment or towards other people. How do you sort of deal with those type of um, emotions? Because they sort of get affected by other things, right? You mean the... Um... You mean like in a conflict between you and other people, or do yeah. you mean effective? So in a conflict between uh, one and another, <laughs> there's always two people, right? So there is your perception of what is going on, and there's the input from the other person. For me, it's uh, what, and feelings. It's uh, for me to be able to feel myself. <laughs> I need to withdraw myself. This is how I work. So then I redraw myself, run a marathon, you know, and, <laughs> uh, and I allow myself to feel the feelings that I have. And when I've done that, I look into what is still left. What do I need to 
um, express to the other in order of feeling free within myself or in order of of um, doing the communication more straight for other people uh, they have a need to have the conflict in the moment so they are like blah 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 and back and forward because that's their drive they can just express themselves in the moment together with the other person but people who are like you and me are not able to feel ourselves <laughs> when we are in the conflict itself because we feel the other person we feel the chaos we feel everything around it and for for us what we need to do is we need to allow ourselves to redraw ourselves for the situation allow all the feelings to flow through so that we can systematically <laughs> figure out which is ours and what is the others you know and then bring it back to the table it's a matter of of, of knowing ourselves and allowing ourselves to do it the way that functions for us we are not uh we don't function like most people does in in this form so so when you are like us or for people with uh, artistic syndromes or these kind of people they do need to be in a safe space <laughs> in order of actually feeling one thing from another so to allow yourself to be how you are then this is a part of it thank you um then i can also ask because that is a very interpersonal question right of how you really um, take yourself in relation to others how do you get a better connection to the earth or to the energies that you often speak of or the beings around i understand that maybe they don't always want to have connection with certain people perhaps <laughs> but how can you get more in tune with uh, these energies it's uh, the very, I usually say it's the same way that you connect to a new body child. It's you go to your heart and you go like, ah! <laughs> so you see it with unconditional love. And when you meet uh, an energy with unconditional love, it feels safe to open up and share. And then you, you connect through that. So to come closer to nature or talking with water or talking with plants, you just have to see it with love and to feel love and then allow them to enter your space from from that feeling yeah gotcha then i will ask my last question this might not be a very long episode but um i'm not great at the interviewing thing but i'm doing You're my best doing awesome thank you i mean <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we did discover a shared interest in energy yes. drinks, unfortunately, <laughs> despite both of us probably knowing that oh, it's not oh. the best thing to do. What would you say we, is your we gotta favorite? Get this, we yeah. got to get this disclaimer where, oh no, you cannot advertise for something the devil have created. <laughs> do not drink energy drinks. We do not think that it's a good thing. <laughs> However, that said, what is your favorite flavor? It's the wide one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a very good one. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, so this other thing that we we talked about were like some people might know that all the diagnosis and stuff. I was born hyperactive, HDAD, and, and you have also some uh, Yeah, I have autism and whether I have HDHD is also in question. Yes. So for us, what we discussed was like, if we drink a half of a monster, our brain just feels relaxed and calm. <laughs> so, so the, um, the, the coffee the works different on people who have some of these syndromes. And if I look into it energetically, it's because our brain runs fast and it, 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 um, it functions a bit different than a normal brain. So when it gets the caffeine, it's like this, it's like the body runs the same speed as the brain, <laughs> sort of, kind of. So there's like this balance between the neurons that does so we feel that we are relaxed. For other people, it will work exactly the other way around. That being said, if we drink a whole one, we're not going to sleep anytime soon, for sure. <laughs> Perhaps that is uh, why my sleep schedule isn't always the 
best yeah. thing ever. <laughs> and that's why we say drink responsibly, whether it's alcohol or energy drinks. Exactly. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for letting me interview you and ask you all of these questions. Uh, it uh, gives some more insight into a world that I have not really been a part of, as well as just help on a personal level quite a bit. Uh, so it's uh, it's been fun to be able to have this sort of discussion with someone that I'm usually doing stuff in the being background hung. of. I'm usually <laughs> being just a uh, someone who observes and spectates from the background. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much because you want to be a part of it. I I really loved it. Yeah. And and I love this. Yeah, definitely. And and I love this thing with um, like I think we talked about it earlier. The, for me, I see a lot of resonance in, in you, uh, in the way you are, the way you perceive the world reality, the way your brain function, because funny enough, we have a lot of these things in common. Just, <laughs> we can say I have the hyperactive, you have the inward thingy. So I am just becoming the voice of what is inside of your head. So I, I love it. It's like day and night and yet it's the same. <laughs> yeah, sort of still connected. All right. Uh, thank you Hi. very much, and bye to everyone as well who has uh, looked at uh, me asking Elisa questions, and I hope that it has been proven entertaining. <laughs> thank you, Era. And for everyone, um, I'm going to say this thing you have to remember to say. Remember to hit the subscribe button in the button. And thank you so much for watching this episode. If you have any comments, anything you would like to ask or add, write in the comment below and if you would want to be one of the interviewers and ask questions on our zoom live recording then send us an email and we will create some magic so thank you Doo -doo see you next week